Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today on our virtual webinar with HR.com. My name is Kelly Keaton, and I'm a Sales Solutions Manager for Human Resources with Perceptive Software. And prior to joining Perceptive Software about a year and a half ago, I spent about 21 years in HR, practicing HR, and 10 of those were in director and executive level positions. So I have some great experience in HR, and I'm really excited to have the opportunity to talk to you today about advanced document management and specifically creating a comprehensive electronic employee file. Now, as we go through the session today, I encourage you to ask questions online. I will be taking questions at the end of the session, but please send those along. We'd be happy to answer them. So what we'll talk about, the agenda for the session is First, just talking about advanced document management and the key benefits that come along with that. And we'll jump in by first starting, about, starting to talk about electronic employee files or personnel files. And then system integration. And what I mean by that is how to get your HRIS systems and your other systems talking and integrating well with your document management system so that you can have everything in one place. Next, we'll talk about workflow, and this is really the approval of documents uh, going through a process, and what that looks like with electronic forms and eliminating those paper forms. Then we'll talk about retention and reporting, and then I'll summarize with some efficiencies. And then at the end, I'd like to wrap up by sharing with you five questions that you may want to ask a solution provider if you're, in fact, an, interested in a document management process. So. In order to get an idea for our audience today, I'd like to start off by asking a poll question. And the first poll question that I have is, what is your current role in HR? So we give you a list here of HRIS, recruiting, generalist, compensation and benefits, or other. And you can feel free to uh, select more than one of those if you want, if you have the pleasure of doing many different functions within your HR organization. But this just gives us an idea of the background from some, some of those in the audience. OK. Well, it looks like what we have is a, a good little spread, mostly, of course, in the generalist role and some in HRIS. Um, and then also comp and bin, which is great because really with a document management system, what we're able to do is touch every different area within HR. But it's helpful for us to know who we have on the, uh, the virtual webinar today. So let's jump in and talk about the key benefits that you might find with a document management system. So in today's age, we have a lot of initiatives within our organization, such as going green, where we want to eliminate the paper and save the trees. And this is certainly a way to do that. Um, also, disaster recovery is coming up a lot these days. But unfortunately, people have been affected by wildfires, tornadoes, some floods, and lost many of their very, very important documents and sensitive documents. And so those can be benefits. But I'd like to highlight. Um, just on the high level, some of the other key benefits for a document management system. So first of all, in HR, it goes without saying, we're dealing with confidential employee information, and our system needs to absolutely be secure. So that's number one. Then also, what a system can do for you is automatically organize and store your documents so that you're not spending so much time in that file room. Next, you can track your documents and your processes and be able to see whose desk a document is on versus in the paper world, that's a little bit of a struggle. And then also in this day and age, we're working from uh, diff different locations. Uh, we have different number of offices. Our files are stored in different places. But we can work anywhere and access documents instantly at any time. Now, audits. I like to talk about audits with document management because in our paper world, I know personally I've spent days, weeks, and even months trying to collect paper documents from different places in order to provide to auditors. With a document management system, you can imagine you're spending a fraction of that time because you have instant access to all of the documents that you need to gather. 
And then finally, my favorite, and that is if you have a more efficient HR team, you're going to be able to give much better service to your customers who are your employees. So, so those are some of the key business, uh, benefits. So now, if you don't mind, I'd like to jump in and do another polling question. And this question is, <clears throat> what are your key concerns regarding your paper employee files? And so some people, for some people, it's security, storage, accessibility. You may have several concerns. But this will give us an idea of, of really why this is of interest to you. Give you a second here to fill that out, some results. OK. Thank you for selecting those. It looks like we have kind of across the board. Um, security, security and accessibility are huge. Um, storage space, yeah, this is a big cost issue. So um, definitely something that document management, document management can help with. And then also for some of you audits as well. So thank you very much for sharing that. OK, now what I'd like to do is dive right in and start talking about where Companies usually start when they're talking about a document management system. The focus is on those electronic employee files and what does it look like to no longer have the paper and to be able to view and access documents in an employee file. So I like to use this visual and hopefully you know, no one's desk looks like this and it's an extreme example. But I know personally with the amount of documents going across our desks, every day in HR, it certainly feels like this. And what we want to do is move into an environment where you have a much more efficient desk, like one with a content management system. So how do we do that? How do we get there? So first of all, we really need to create the filing cabinet and on the front end decide what that should look like. Right now, in your storage rooms, you may have filing cabinets that look like this. They're not compliant. They're not secure. And anyone that has a key to that filing room, whether it's an HR person or a security person, they really have access to every document that you have. So what do you need to do in order to build the electronic file? Well, first of all, you need to determine with all of the document types that you have within your storage filing cabinet today, how should they be organized within the file? So in your, in your uh, metal filing cabinet, you probably have hanging files and colored folders in order to separate the types of documents that should not be sitting next to one another. So for example, you can set up drawers and folders based on some of these issues or these items that I uh, mentioned. Personnel files shouldn't be sitting next to the I-9 file. Disciplinary documents don't need to be sitting next to medical and so on. So you're able to, by document type, be able to determine how those should be filed and organized in your cabinet in the electronic format. Now I want to mention a, another thing here, too, is we have the ability to assign additional attributes to our documents so that we can easily find and organize our files. So if you want to look at only documents from a certain location or business unit or a cost center, and you can put security around that so that only the right people are accessing documents for their particular location. Now, for HR employees, you know, we really probably shouldn't have access to our own employee file or our peers' files. So we could put security around that as well, as well as who can see executive files. And then maybe you want to do some additional separating, like for exempt and non-exempt, non and have those be separated. So at the end of the day, you can really emulate what you have in your metal, metal filing cabinets, but you're able to have much more security around the information within them. <clears throat> so let's talk about the documents that need to go into the file itself. So when we think about the files in the cabinets, we're talking about paper. And we're talking about scanning those usually. And that's a big effort on the front end. But then as we're moving forward, we're receiving content that comes in many different formats. And they're listed here on the screen, just a sample of how we might receive different types of content. But we have a lot of different ways that we can pull in that content, whether it's, again, by a scanner, or maybe you can fax directly into your electronic filing cabinet, or use a multifunctional printer. 
And then you also can have electronic documents that are e-forms, and we'll talk about that in, in just a minute. But you may have email attachments that are sent to you, or you may have uh, employee self-service information or SharePoint files. All of this content is content that exists in our HR organization, and we can manage that in an electronic format. Security is probably the number one most important thing that we talk about in HR because of the sensitivity of the information. So important. And we start off by thinking about it in the way of access. So who should have access to what types of documents? And we can put that security or security around those documents. So even piggybacking on security that you already have built in your HRIS system, we can build security to be able to say, a recruiter really doesn't need to have access to payroll documents, for example. And we certainly don't want our managers to be able to see medical confidentiality documents. So again, we put security around who has access to what type of documents. And then next, the way we organize our files. And I already spoke to this a little bit. But it is important that certain documents are held in separate folders away from one another. And then we can assign what, we, what you might call indexing to associate those documents with an employee ID or with a department or with a manager and be able to organize our files in that way. And then lastly, workflow. And what I mean by workflow is really being able to take a document and move it from one person's desk to the next as an approver so that they can take an action on that form. Well, one of the difficult things with paper is you're dealing with such highly confidential information. You don't want those documents sitting on your desk. And you also might want to take care when you're sending documents through interoffice mail or through the US Post to get to a different location. So picture it in the electronic world, it's never a piece of paper and it's moving securely from one person's desk to the next. So once we get all of the information into the filing cabinet, how do we access it? So I'll give you an example here. So let's say I receive a call from an employee and he or she has a question about their W-4 allowance. They don't remember if they selected two or three deductions. So what I would do in order to answer that question is simply go to my HRIS system because the document management system is integrated with that system. And I would simply pull up the employee record in my HRIS system and have that on my screen. And from there, what you can do is see a list of every single document that's held within that employee's personnel file. So in this case, I'd like to look at the W-4, so I simply click on the W-4 and the document pops up and I'm able to easily answer that question immediately for that employee. So I'm not getting the cardio from running to the filing cabinet and I'm not having to call someone else that has a key to the filing cabinet or wait to get the information. I can answer that question instantly. Now if the person, the employee still has a question about the document, what you can also do is create a hyperlink and just send that document directly to that employee via email so they can have a copy of the document as well. So that's a little bit about accessing. Let's talk about viewing those documents. So how do we view them? Well, I already mentioned that from your HRIS screen, you can look at every single document that's held within the employee file. So you can see all of those documents. And as long as you have access to them based on security, you can instantly access the document. You can also see where the document is in the, in the approval process or the workflow queue. So in the paper world, you're not wondering whose desk it's on and chasing down a document to find out where we are in the status to answer a question. You can see automatically where that document is in the approval process and who we're waiting on for the approval. Another way to search is Different from being able to see every document in an employee's file, maybe you don't want to see those documents in that fashion. Maybe you want to just look at a type of document. And we have the ability to search and put together the criteria of what we want to look for. So if I'm a payroll person and I want to look at all of the 401k documents for a certain location or business unit, I can put in that selective criteria and narrow down that search. And also, let's say I do this search frequently, and I'm using this every day. 
well, rather than recreating the search, which is simple in the first place, but you can actually save the search and put it directly on your desktop so that when you come into the office in the morning, you can automatically go and pull up that set of documents based on your search. So let's shift gears a little bit. And we've talked about that electronic filing cabinet and what, what it looks like to create it and build it and then view it and access documents. Let's talk about system integration. What I want to focus on is the ability for you to build that comprehensive file so that you can access all documents associated with an employee. In our world now, we, we have some documents sitting in some pieces of software and some in others and some in the paper files. Now, this is kind of a busy slide, but let me, let me walk you through this. So on the far right, you can see a visual of what that secure document repository looks like with your document management system. And on the top there, we already talked about how that HRIS system is integrated so that you're able to access any information, whether it's employee self-service or any data fields, any information that's within your HRIS can be accessed and stored based on that integration. And really, your document management system should be able to integrate with any HRIS system that you might be using today. Now, in addition to that, and I'll draw your attention to the lower part of the screen, is a listing of some third-party software specialty services. And a lot of companies, and this is a changing thing in our HR world, is we're going to automation of our, say, our applicant tracking and recruiting process. Or maybe we have a software for onboarding, or maybe even for performance management. Well, this is great, and I love the automation. But one thing that is very difficult is be able to keep track of, again, every document that should be held within that employee's file. So with an integration like this, if I were to want to look at every document for a certain employee, I don't have to go into three and four different systems log in, pull those documents, as well as go to a paper file and pull those documents in order to gather everything that I need. What you have is that secure document repository where everything is one, in one place because we're able to integrate with those other systems. One small point here is your HRIS system and any of your other software applications, those will still be your system of record. But what we want to do is accomplish the ability for us to have a one-stop shopping experience for that HR person to be able to see everything in one place. So when we think about the functions in HR where we are looking at technology to help us automate and move from a paper environment to an electronic process, we can break this down into certain categories of the employee life cycle. So starting with recruitment before they're even on board as, a, as an employee, and then moving to the new hire paperwork that we have on their first day of employment. But then also employee management. And what I mean by employee management is any document or transaction that takes place during the active tenure of an employee while they're with the company. So this can include payroll documents, benefits documents, as well as maybe a personnel action form, or a tuition reimbursement process, or disciplinary documents. So a lot of paper can be found in our everyday transactions, and we can really move to an automated world with electronic documents. Finally, I'll mention offboarding, and this is really being able to handle that separation or termination process with a checklist and make sure that we can cross all of our, um, cover all of our bases for uh, offboarding an employee. So on your screen now, I'm not going to go through each of these, but this is really kind of breaking out the categories that I shared with you on the previous slide. And this is examples, this is an example of all of the many different paper processes that we may have that we can turn into electronic forms. And we can make a lot more efficient processes by doing this. So again, you may be with an organization that has a, a third-party software to handle your onboarding already, or maybe your recruitment. And that's OK, because what happens is that you can complement those, again, by integrating with those systems. But where you do have 
areas that aren't automated and you still have paper, you can complement those other systems by implementing some of these uh, processes into an electronic format. Okay, before we jump into workflow and electronic forms, what I'd like to do is talk about an, or ask you another polling question. And this question I'd like to ask you about any systems that you might have that you're using, some of those third-party processes that I mentioned. So for example, do you have an applicant tracking system or an onboarding system? Maybe you have a performance reviews that are automated or some ESS functionality within your HRIS system. <clears throat> and again, I'll mention here that you know I know that this is becoming more and more common that HR organizations are purchasing these third-party applications. <clears throat> and with a document management position, again, we're, we're not looking to replace those. It's really to complement and then just fill in the gaps where you don't have those systems. OK, good. Thank you for doing that. And share the results here. It looks like 48% have an ATS and 41% have an employee self-service. Fantastic. Now, I know with onboarding and performance reviews, these are areas that are, that are growing now. And um, HR organizations are able to use these third-party softwares or a document management system for that. OK. Again, joining back into our, our process here for workflow and the approval process and electronic forms, we talked about all of those forms that were on your screen, but how do they move through an approval process and what does it look like? What are some of the features for those electronic forms? So what I'm showing you here is just a visual. This is a behind the scenes tool for workflow and you can see I've given you an example of what an electronic form may look like as it goes from approver to approver and then finally ending up in the employee's file. But what this is, and I mentioned behind the scenes, it's really the ability for your users on your HR team to be able to build these workflows and approval processes easily. So you can use, this is like Visio technology, it's drag and drop. And you can on the fly, if you have a change in your process, you can easily create another queue or change the process without having to call a third party vendor and have a consultant or professional services come in and pay them to make the change, which can not only take a lot of time, but can also cost a lot of money. So your document management system should have an easy to use tool where you can design your workflow process easily. So now we know how the documents go from place to place. Let's talk a little bit more about the electronic forms. And I'm excited about this because um, there's so much functionality here that can help us. And I know as an HR professional with the new hire process, it, it can take a couple of days to gather all of the paper and get all of the signatures that are needed. But if you can picture um, with, with an electronic form process, you can have that all automated. So I had a friend of mine who just started a new job last week, and she was able to go to the portal and be sent a link to every form that she needed to fill out for her new job, and she was done and completed all of that before she ever walked in the door. So there's a lot of efficiency that goes along with that, let alone what it saves you in HR as far as time to process all of that paper getting it to the right person, and being able to track and make sure you received everything you needed to. So again, an example on an electronic form here would say, say the direct deposit form. The employee would simply click on the link, pull up the form, fill out the form. It automatically gets sent to payroll. Payroll takes the action on the form, and the form can go to the file. It's that easy. So let me expand on some of the attributes for an, for an e-form. First of all, I mentioned it could be accessed directly from the portal. And the document management system should have the ability to pre-populate fields in those forms with data that already exists in your HRIS system. So for an existing employee, if I go to the portal or the intranet and I click on a form to fill out, how nice is it that 
you're able to pre-populate some of those fields. So the employee may not know their employee ID. They may not know how to spell their manager's name. They may not know what cost center they're in. So if we could pre-populate those fields and not have the employee responsible to fill them out, it saves a lot of time and it saves some accuracy. And you'll never have an illegibility issue on the paper form when you can't read the writing. We talked about workflow and how that form can route to the necessary approvers. And that we can also track whose desk it's on. You can always tell where in the workflow process that electronic form is. From a security perspective, you're only having the, the users that need to access that form having the ability to access it because we've built in the security. And then notifications and alarms. And this is so important because we know, even in our paper world, there are some approvers that take forever. And paper may sit on their desk, and you're waiting for days. You may not know whose desk it's on, but that personnel action form is not getting through the process quickly and it's taking a long time and people want to know the status. Well, what we can do is we can set up a notification such as an email that goes to that approver saying they need to take an action on the document or even an alarm or something that scrolls across their screen that says you have something in your queue that needs to be approved and we need to keep this form moving. Another nice feature is being able to take information that is in the form that has been approved as it's gone through the process and then automatically be able to upload the information into HRIS. So you are completely eliminating manual data entry and keying. You're saving time and it's way more accurate because that information goes in, into the system automatically. We're going to talk about retention here in a few minutes, but this is also an important piece on the electronic forms of being able to tell how long that document should stay in the file. And then electronic signatures, and this is a bigger and bigger topic. And you know, we know we have some compliance that we need to follow when, when a wet signature is required. And we always work with our legal friends to make sure that we can determine do we have the right type of signature. And the document management system that you select and use should be in compliance with the eSign Act of 2000. <clears throat> so it's not just a digital signature or an acknowledgment that is an email back saying that, that an employee approved. There's actual biometric signature capabilities and certified signature capabilities where we can tell the act of signing the document, we can tell when and where, and be able to certify it and again, be in compliance with eSign Act of 2000. We can do email-based signing as well as form-based signing. So we have a lot of functionality here with electronic signatures. So I'll shift gears a little bit and talk about document output management. And you may or may not be familiar with this, but um, in the document management world, in the enterprise content management world, Document output management is something that is a part of, or should be a part of, a good document management company. So what does it mean? It's those big mailers that we send out, and it's always a struggle. So they may be mailers that go out through email, and they may be mailers that go out to be printed and then mailed. Some examples from those may be if you have benefits information, or confirmation of benefits, compensation changes, or maybe you change a policy and you need to make sure that a note goes out to every employee. But what you could do is you could pull from your current systems or even multiple systems and be able to have the intelligence in those forms so that you can fill in a template with only the right information for that person. So maybe you have a different form for a non-exempt person than you do for an exempt person. So the, the document output management tool has the intelligence built in so you can pull information from those systems and have accurate mailings. You can also do customized and smaller type documents. So sometimes with employee contracts, maybe based on a certain job, then they need to have certain information in there. So if, it's, if they're in sales, maybe you need to get, include commission information. You could also do credentialing renewal of documents. So if someone is due to be recertified in something, um, we could trigger based on how long they've had their credentials or if it's expired and do customized. So those are some of the features of document output management. 
other other things I'd like to talk about here are some, some tools that are really helpful for HR are retention and reporting. So what I'm showing you here on the screen is an example of maybe what a retention policy may look like. But every organization has their own guidelines that they need to follow, and they work with their legal department to determine what are those retention policy rules. And these are just examples to, to give you an idea of what they may look like. And sometimes uh, we have federal compliance rules that tell us exactly how long we have to keep those records. And sometimes it's based on determination within your company. So what you can do is put in place a retention policy management tool that helps you to track that. Another area where it's so very hard in a paper world to be able to set up a tickler system where you're taking documents out of the file when they need to be. So you can do this based on an event or you can do it based on time. So let's say, for example, an employee terminates. And your retention policy is that document should really only be left in the file for three more years. We can trigger something from the HRIS system once that person is terminated, and that document will now be put into a retention schedule, and we know exactly when the document needs to be removed. So one great thing is that you can be sure that the document won't just automatically disappear into thin air once it's reached the end of its life cycle, but you can set up approvals and have certain requirements for those approvers to be able to decide, yes, that document is ready for destruction or removal. And then we also have the ability to put in a litigation or audit holds on documents that should never be removed from the file in those two instances. So there's a couple of just interesting features that a retention policy management function can do for you. Next, I'd like to show you a reporting example. And I love this. In HR, I always struggled with how do I determine, do I have everything in the file that I need to have in the file? So I'm showing you an example for onboarding. We all know that we have certain documents that need to come in and need to be in the file within a certain amount of time for that employee. So you can set up a report and be able to see what's in the file, what's not in the file. And when you have blanks, then you know you need to go get that information. This is great for audit, and it's also great for preparation. So I've been in a situation with litigation where I needed to have certain documents that show that that employee signed the uh, employee handbook. And if that document's not in the file, we've got a problem. So that's an example, and I could name off many, where it's nice to be able to see what document is in the file and what's not. We would call this document deficiency reporting. OK, so let's do some summarizing here and talk about some of the efficiencies. And I, can, I think I've shared with you a lot of the things that you can gain when you put a document management system in place. But what do you lose? Well, you lose the problem where you have many different copies of different documents for employees sitting in a lot of different places. So today, HR may have a file in their file room. Payroll keeps some files in their desk drawer. Benefits has another copy of some files that they have in their desk drawers. And then the manager keeps files for the employee. So no longer. What you're able to do with the document management system is have everything in one place. And then the right people can access them. Much more efficient. And we don't have the many, many different copies and the exposure of having confidential information where it shouldn't be. We also talked about that efficiency and the integration with those systems to be able to have one-stop shopping. And you can access documents from any place at any time by instantly accessing them. The other thing is traceable. You can see and show from an audit perspective who has accessed what document. You can also see who tried to access the document, which I think is important as well. And then on audits, we talked about the time savings. You can conduct an audit in a fraction of the time. But here's another good point. You also know where that original document lives. That's an important piece to an auditor, is to know where are the original documents. So you don't have to worry about copies of the same thing sitting in a lot of different places. 
Okay, as I mentioned earlier, for wrap-up, what I'd like to do is leave you with a few questions to ask yourself. If this is something that's interested in you, uh, to, interesting to you to seek out a document management system, what are some of the questions you might want to ask? First of all, I would start with, can it easily integrate with your HRIS system? That's critical to have that kind of functionality. Next, I would think about scalability. Hopefully that scalability would be up and not down. But if you need to go from 10 to 10,000 users, you need a system that can be able to handle that. Also, is your workflow easy to use? So I already mentioned when we spoke about workflow that this should be a tool that you could do internally to decide what should be the approval process of your document. And the last thing that you'd want to do is to have to call a consultant from another vendor and have them work on the issue with you and pay them for that. And it just takes a lot of time. So flexibility and easy to use graphical interface. Like I said, Visio type technology. And then electronic forms. We talked about all of the efficiencies that come along with it. And you'll want to make sure that you'll find that type of functionality within electronic forms tools. And then finally, does it have a document output management component? As I mentioned, this is becoming more and more prevalent today, the importance of having the ability to do document output management, or DOM as it can be called for short. So does that solution, uh, is that included in the document management system? So that's what I wanted to cover. Um, at this point, what I'd like to do is open it up for questions and be able to answer any of those that you might have. I'll give you a second here. That's it. OK, so I have a question about multiple systems that are automated. And I'm not sure I understand the full scope of the question, but let me just talk to that again. As we spoke about the system integration, I think the fact that HR organizations are turning to best of breed software applications where they can automate processes within their organization, that is great. And you want your document management solution to complement those. Again, you don't want to have uh, you know, replace technology the where you've already automated things. So for document management system to be able to integrate with those is very, very important. Let me just uh, check here for some further questions. So a question I have here is, shouldn't a system like this have an authorization element such that it will limit who has access to what? Limit access to right to know only. Yes, absolutely. And that's all built in with the security. I mentioned earlier that you can piggyback on security that you may have already built within your HRIS system. But what you can also do is add additional layers of security. And you do want to limit who has access to what. I gave an example of a manager, for instance. Managers should be able to look at documents within the, the employee's file, but only certain ones. They may only need to see performance information or maybe that resume, but they certainly don't need to see medical confidentiality agreement. So yes, you can apply that security. Another question that I have is, can you expand on a difference between digital and electronic signatures? Yeah, this is a good one. And um, it's becoming very, very prevalent today. Um, as I mentioned, as we work with our legal teams, and you know, they really need to decide for your organization what they will accept for a wet signature, for example. But if you look at the difference for digital and electronic, digital is a subset of electronic. So with a digital signature, you can think of that more as an acknowledgment that I say, I click here to say I agree with this document. Maybe you use that for your handbook or a policy change. But the electronic signature is more um, what we look for is as far as a wet signature or a uh, one that has an auditable 
trail that we can show who signed that document, where they signed it, and their functionality um, that's built in that makes it airtight, that this couldn't be just anyone filling this out. There are a lot of different ways you can do that with a PIN number, um, and the, there are ways that you can do it with, um, if you sign with a mouse, you sure might not be able to read it, but you can at least follow the uh, signing of that document from your mouse and be able to say, see who did that and when they did it. You could also use signature keypads um, or give a PIN number for initials after you qualify oneself. So the difference, again, just to summarize, is really digital signatures are a subset of electronic signatures. Electronic signatures are those that need to be in compliance with the eSign Act of 2000. Another question we have is, can an approval, oh wait, just I lost that, hold on here. Um, can, a, a, can approvals be escalated? So for example, if a manager's on vacation and does the approval roll up, yes. Within that workflow tool, where I, I showed you the behind the scenes look in that designer, you should be able to put it in out of office, which is easy to do. And what will happen is that document approval process will skip that, that queue and go to a next approver. So yes, you can set it up for an out of office. Um, you can also set it up with a time limit. So for example, if a document goes to someone, they forgot to do an out of office, they're on vacation, um, Maybe you need to have that document signed within 24 hours. If that person doesn't approve it, then it'll automatically go to the next approver or even to a manager. You can set it up either way. There's a lot of flexibility there. Um, let's see here. How long does it take to implement a solution? Well, you're not going to like my answer because I'm going to say it depends. <laughs> um, it really depends on how much you want to achieve. So if you're just starting with electronic documents, for example, um, you know, you could probably design and get that, uh, get your current paper documents scanned in and built um, in, in really a couple of months. And a lot of times it depends more on the customer and how fast they can move and the resources they can use to get that done. So that can happen really fast. But when you look at the length of time that it might take to add in other functionalities like putting in e-forms or, or you know, adding to your portal the ability to, to take those paper documents into electronic forms, that process really can go on and on and on. And the way the document management should, uh, tools should be set up is that the functionality is purchased. So internally you can continue to have that project go on as you come up with other efficiencies that you can add to it. I would say from my perspective, um, for a total document management implementation, it's more around the six to eight month time frame. Okay. <clears throat> what is the standard process for entering paper documents into the system? Well, I'll answer this in a couple of different ways. The first way I'll answer this is at the beginning when you're building your electronic filing cabinet and you have um, metal filing cabinets full of paper, uh, the standard process is to go through an exercise to, to determine the types of documents you have within those files and how you're going to uh, bring those over into the system. It's usually a combination of a, a large scanning process. We can use barcodes in order to make that process go more swiftly. And then there's also functionality where you can put in um, what we would call an auto form identification, meaning if you have a document that looks the same, that, that always looks the same, a W-2, for example, hasn't changed in 132 years, with the exception of what year is on it, so we can recognize what that document is. So you, it can automatically put itself into the system after scanning and go through the approval process to get to the right place. So that would be kind of the standard process for getting documents into the system. Okay, one other question with uh, where do we get information on this type of system? 
Um, you know, I gave you some questions that you could ask yourself as you search for those. My particular company is Perceptive Software. You're welcome to go and check out our website. Um, the functionality is Enterprise Content Management, or ECM. Um, we talked about it today in the context of advanced document management. But uh, ECM is really the, the bigger umbrella. And ECM functionality can really work in a lot of different departments across your organization. It can be enterprise-wide. Today, we really only focus on the HR side of it. Um, but you can certainly get information from, and I have that up on the screen now. Oops. OK, I'm looking at a couple more questions. I know we're getting close on time here. Oh, this is a good question. Um, when I gave an example about the employee's W-4, and the question is, why wouldn't I allow the employee to simply access that document? The answer is you can. And it really uh, depends on the scope of how you implement it. So you can create employee self-service functionality with giving employees the opportunity to access documents within their files. You can absolutely do that. So the example that I used was simply trying to show exactly how easy it is for an HR pro professional to be able to access that document and answer a question. But, the, but I'm, I'm glad you raised this, because there absolutely is the ability to give employees and managers, depending upon what access that we want to give, the ability to go see that document for themselves. Um, let's see, the paper, okay. Okay, I got some specific um, uh, information from a gentleman, Don Collins. I see your question here, and I'll certainly reach out to you. And let's see what else we have here. Thank you so much for the questions. These are great, by the way. OK, I have a question about, um, it, it says, in our organization, each employee has a position number that reports to another position number. Can this system allow the supervisor or manager has moved into the position that manages automatically access to the employee files? Yes. So remember, we're integrated with the HRIS system. So changes that get made, if a manager moves to a different position number, or an employee is promoted or transferred to a different department, that information is um, uploading into the document management system regularly. You can set it up to do it nightly. This is important for things like name changes as well. Uh, but as far as access and piggybacking on the, on the security that's already built into your system with position numbers and um, and employee numbers, that is easily maintained as from a security perspective. And I got another question that's just like that. When an employee transfers between work groups, will the system accept updates systematically to the new manager can access the file? Yes. So the, that security will be built with, along with the HRIS security system. So when you change that in your HRIS system, we can piggyback on that security. OK. I think I've gotten through most of the questions here. Um, again, you have some contact information on the slide there. Would love to hear from you if you have further questions. What I'd like to do is really thank you for your time today. I've enjoyed the session. I hope you have, too. And I hope you have a great afternoon. Thank you.